just before Christmas 1982. Henrietta Millick was at one of her favorite bars in downtown St. John's. She was a 25-year-old, fun-loving woman who had dreams of becoming a nurse. But 30 years ago, Henrietta Millick vanished. No one has been able to solve the mystery of her disappearance. I think someone took her. I really do. I believe that there are people in the community who, who have knowledge and uh, for various reasons are afraid and unwilling to uh, share them with us. It's one of the oldest missing persons cases in the province. A cold case, as cold as the day Henrietta Millick vanished. The Key Club was located on Water Street West. There was a strip of bars along here that no longer exists. It was an after hours club and it was known as a bit of a rough spot. Police believe that Henrietta Millick was there on or about the night of December 11th, 1982. It was the last place she was ever seen. Henrietta's best friend, Mary Pia Benowin, spent time at the club too. The not knowing is the hardest part. Because I'm always thinking, where is she? Is she still alive? Mary Pia grew up in Sheheji and met Henrietta in Labrador. Both women had come to St. John's to further their education. Henrietta lived in a boarding house in downtown St. John's. She was taking courses at Munn, working as an Inuit translator, and cleaning houses to make ends meet. We'd uh, look through uh, the stores, we'd go window shopping, even though we didn't have money, we'd just look around and hoping to meet some people from home, you know, and it's just so jolly and uh, really friendly at everybody and smiling at everybody. And I do have a lot of good memories of her. One of the last memories caught on camera was a visit to Victoria Park. The older boy in the picture was a child Mary Pia used to babysit. Henrietta was holding her baby, Byron, who was born in St. John's. Mary Pia says Henrietta was drinking a lot after Byron was born. Her baby was taken into foster care. Byron was her whole world and she was looking into trying to straighten her life away, like trying to straighten her life up so that she can get Byron back. Byron was living with foster parents in Mackesons. Henrietta would often hitchhike there to spend time with her son. The week before Henrietta disappeared, she and Mary Pia had made a plan to go see Byron. It was going to be a special occasion on a weekend in December. We were going to ask the foster mom to get the Byron baptized so, I was, so that I could be his godmother. The night before their trip, Henrietta asked Mary Pia to go downtown. Mary Pia decided to stay in. Henrietta went out on her own. She ended up at the Key Club. Assumpta Laws was the Key Club manager. She tended bar every night. Henrietta was one of her regulars. And on this night, Assumpta remembers becoming concerned for her safety. She was out of me crying. And I often said to her, what's the matter with you tonight? And she never answered me. But if someone was after her or something, definitely. Sometime late that night, maybe around one o'clock in the morning, Henrietta made a phone call to Mary Pia at her boarding house. The last phone call she would ever make. As I was coming out of my bedroom, I heard my landlord say to whoever was on the other end, Mary's asleep and I'm not waking her up. The next morning, Mary Pia's landlord told her the late night caller was Henrietta. She sounded a little bit drunk and upset. So that's when I thought maybe something was happening because Henrietta never calls me at, at this house. Mary Pia waited and waited the next day for the planned trip to Mackinson's. Henrietta never showed. It's not like her at all to just disappear. Like Byron is her whole the world. She wouldn't just take off and leave Byron like that. In the days that followed, Mary Pia searched everywhere. 
She wonders what Henrietta wanted to tell her that night on the phone. Was she in trouble? Did she need to be rescued? What if I answered the phone? Would, have, would things have been different now? Like, would my friends still be around if I had taken that call? It bothers Mary Pia that she might never know. To this day, bar manager Assumpta Laws is bothered too, bothered by a bad feeling she had in the key club that night and some unfamiliar men in beige coats. I don't know who they were. Assumpta moved away from the bar to attend to something in the back room. When I came out, her wallet was still on the floor and she was gone. And then two feathers were gone too. And that was the only night they were there and they were never there after. Who were those men? Where had Henrietta gone? In a cold case, 30 years old, it appears nobody knows. Or does someone? The police say yes. I believe, uh, based on conversations that I've had with people, that there are people out there that have uh, significant information in relation to this. And uh, we would uh, ask them to come forward. When we come back, could a 30-year-old purse unlock the mystery of what happened to Henrietta Millick? Assumpta Law's health isn't good today, and she admits her memory isn't as sharp as it used to be. But Assumpta remembers Henrietta Millick well. She was tending bar the night she went missing. 30 years later, some of the details are vague, but she does remember a bad feeling she had about some strange men in the bar that night. They had beige jackets on the top, but what he looks like, I can't tell you. Because it's so long ago, I'm after forgetting, like, you know. Other customers at the Key Club that night told police they noticed the men too. We've learned that she was there that night and was having some problems with some men. And probably three men at a table. People have told us that she was very upset and crying. She had approached staff at the bar who comforted her. When I went in the bathroom, her purse showed up. She was gone and they were gone. And it put me in mind of, as if they took off with her, I, I don't know. Police can't say for certain exactly what night Henrietta Millick was last seen at the Key Club. They believe it was December 11th. It was nearly two weeks later, December 23rd, that Henrietta was officially reported missing by her landlord. On Christmas Eve, radio stations were notified of a missing woman. More than two weeks later, police released a photo to newspapers and television stations. Assumpta Laws remembers when police came to the bar. She had something they'd want to look at. Henrietta Millick's purse. She found it while cleaning up the club the night Henrietta disappeared. But the funny thing is like the purse was thrown on the floor for me to get. That's what I thought because she had it in her hand and, and unless someone grabbed her and she threw it on the floor. Inside, $8.15. Henrietta's address book, her bank book, and the keys to her boarding house. Eight years later, the case landed on the desk of then Constable John House. The purse was the only piece of evidence in a case that was growing cold. House recalls the frustration he felt trying to investigate. I met with people who uh, were uh, clearly afraid and reluctant to uh, share with us or share with me what they, what they knew. I once had a phone call, an anonymous phone call at my office from a person who uh, indicated he had significant information and was willing to meet me. And uh, I went out at the uh, predetermined place, but the person didn't show up. 30 years later, the Millick case remains unsolved. And now, because of CBC's inquiries, police are going back to the only piece of evidence, Henrietta's purse, to look for an answer. We don't know if it was taken from Henrietta and thrown or how it ended up in the, in the corner. But it, so that's, that's something that, that may be useful to uh, conduct more analysis. So there's a, what's called touch DNA. So a very uh, cursory uh, contact 
with an exhibit, a casual touch or even grabbing it and, uh, and holding it, may conceivably have left uh, cells belonging to the person. That analysis could take months. Without a clue from the purse, police are back where they started. A cold case that gets colder with every passing year. In Nain, Henrietta Millick's family now believes she is dead. Verona Itulak is Henrietta's mother. I cry when I am alone, mourning for her. I will always mourn my wonderful daughter. I will always mourn for her. All that's left are memories of her cheerful voice and bright smile. She enjoyed school. She enjoyed it very much. But while she was training to be a nurse, she also wanted to train to be a doctor. Verona says Henrietta left Nain to pursue her dream of nursing. It meant leaving her young son Chesley when he was the same age his own son is now. When he was five, he was told his mother had disappeared. Well, the hardest thing that I was told, it was like, that your, <coughs> that your mother is probably not going to come back and you're probably not going to have no mother rest of your life, maybe. Superintendent John House would love to provide Henrietta Millick's family with answers. He says the mystery of her disappearance often plays on his mind. When we pass by these areas, uh, I often wonder uh, if there's something else we could be doing to, uh, to advance the investigation, if there's something we missed. Henrietta Millick's isn't the only cold case police are struggling to solve. There are two more women missing from downtown St. John's, and police believe all three cases could be connected. Sharon Drover was last seen in 1978. Pamela Asprey disappeared in 1984. The women were known to hitchhike and accept rides with strangers. They were reported missing in, in the fall, November and December. In each of the cases, there is a connection to the downtown area late at night. So that's a, another commonality that we saw. In 1994, the RNC dug up an area in the woods near an old abandoned shack on the Cape Spear Highway. Earlier that year, police dug up a basement of a house in downtown St. John's. Despite their efforts, all three cases remain unsolved. We know how this hurts families to not know what happened to their uh, to their family members, and uh, we know it's our uh, obligation to do uh, the best we can to bring an answer to, to people. So far, we haven't been able to do that, so it's been very frustrating. Frustrating for all who knew Henrietta Millick, too. I still think about her, and I'll be always looking to see could I see her anywhere else, you know, but I couldn't. I never see her after. In the end, Mary Pia Benowin went on to achieve what was her friend Henrietta Millick's dream. She's now a nurse at the clinic in Shehajit, Labrador. She treats the sick and helps heal painful wounds. But in her own life, there's one wound that just won't go away. I'm thinking about her all the time and wondering, you know, uh, what happened to her. If I know what happened to her, maybe I could. I don't know, go on and accept what has happened. But the not knowing is the hardest part. 